Hi guys, it's me Chazar HD and welcome to today's incident analysis of the incidents and overtaking and racing from the classic, another classic race in 2019, the 2019 Hungarian Grand Prix in Budapest. And first off, we're going to look at that epic battle for the race win between Lewis Hamilton and Max Verstappen and how Lewis Hamilton and Max battled and how, of course, Lewis Hamilton eventually was able to get past and get that critical race win so this is first off when they were battling uh on the hard compound tires before lewis pitted for the second time so lewis has got a great run out of turn number one they both have drs because they had uh, drs on daniel ricardo so it's basically even a uh, even ish you know going down to turn two in terms of grip now Lewis Hamilton is trying to go, of course, around the outside because if you're on the outside, that's the only thing you can do. But Max comes across to try and kind of scare Lewis into not doing that. And as you can see here, Lewis is not really at this point in a good enough position to do that. But he's very smart and decides instead to do a switch back through turn two. And that's exactly what he does. As Max Verstappen, you can see ahead, is going wide. And that is great for Lewis Hamilton because, as you can see here, now Lewis has a great run through turn three and now on the run to turn four. And he can definitely make a move into that corner, as you can see right here. Now, passing into turn four is one of the hardest things in Formula One because that turn turn four it's so quick even on your own it's such a fast corner to get both cars going through that corner side by side without either contact or one of the cars going off circuit is honestly very very rare because it's such a quick corner and it's also so so tight as well now at this point because lewis has got that better run the only thing lewis can do is go around the outside he can't go to the inside because max has already covered that off so lewis is going to try and go around the outside and at this point lewis is absolutely going for it now if you guys you know just think back to the 2014 hungarian grand prix you may remember lewis hamilton going around the outside of jean eric verne in a toro rosso that is what Lewis Hamilton is trying to do. Make a critical pass around the outside of turn four to really help his race result. Now, the difference between that pass and Lewis's attempted pass yesterday is that Jean-Éric Verne, because he was in a great position in a bad car in a weird race, he wasn't willing to risk his car to keep his position. But because Max Verstappen is in a very good car and was willing to risk his car to keep the lead of the Grand Prix, that's why Lewis Hamilton was not able to go and take the lead of the Grand Prix. Because, as you'll see here, Max Verstappen has his nose right on the apex of the corner. And if Lewis Hamilton had decided to turn in, then Lewis's race would have been over because it would have been massive contact with Max Verstappen and Lewis probably would have gone into the barriers and Max Verstappen might have been out of the race as well, which could have led to a Ferrari 1-2. So Lewis had to, as he did, go off the track and then let Max Verstappen back through. Great battling, great defensive uh, driving by Max Verstappen, knew exactly where to place his car and also... Lewis Hamilton, a uh, great car placement from himself to try and get past Max Verstappen. But of course, after Lewis Hamilton pitted for the second time for medium compound tyres, he was catching Max so, so quickly. And a pass at the very end of the race, I'm afraid, for Max Verstappen uh, was inevitable. As they came down to turn one, Max defended the inside, Lewis pulled to the outside, and at this point, as you can see there by the white line, Lewis is quite a bit ahead. And because Lewis Hamilton is on fresher and softer tyres, as long as Lewis doesn't lock up, all he has to do simply is just drive completely around the outside of Max Verstappen. And that is what he does because he does have more grip and more speed 
going into the corner. Max Verstappen, at this point, all he can do is hope that Lewis Hamilton does lock up. But of course, he does not do so. And Lewis Hamilton went on to win the Grand Prix and he absolutely deserved it. By the way, the battle between Lewis and Max was so good in the race, it proves why they're clearly the two best drivers on the grid. Also, the way Lewis drove proves that he is, for me, still just about the best driver on the grid. And the way they pulled away from everyone else and were way faster, for me, was very reminiscent of Michael Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen a long time ago. Because if you guys remember back to, say, Suzuka 2000 or other races from that era, when Michael and Mika were at the very front of the grid, close uh, and very close, you know, racing, normally the next car behind them would be, like it was yesterday with Vettel and Leclerc, about a minute behind. Because the front two drivers were pushing each other so hard for every single lap that they had to push at 100% to be able to be in either P1 or P2. Great racing, and hopefully we can see more of that in 2019. And again, for the fourth time in a row in 2019, we've had another great Grand Prix. But now, let's get into how Valtteri Bottas uh, and how his race basically ended in terms of going for the race win, how it ended after about four corners. So Valtteri, as you guys know, locked up at turn one, but did not lose a position. And then into turn two, as you can see here, locks up again. And Lewis Hamilton now knows he has to go around the outside. Valtteri is trying to push Lewis wide, but Lewis is like, no, I'm going to go around the outside and I am absolutely going to get this move done. Now, can I just say and also commend Lewis Hamilton on being so brave to do this move on a first lap of a Grand Prix, go right round the outside of turn two. And also, I have to praise him because he absolutely, if he was going to win the race like he did, he had to beat Bottas into turn two and turn three. And again, that's what he did. And it shows again why Lewis is just slightly the better driver than Max Verstappen. Not that Max is bad or anything, but Lewis, when he absolutely has to make an overtake or make something work for him, almost every time he does. And he did this time on Valtteri Bottas. And then Valtteri ran wide on the exit of turn three. And that gave Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari a great run on him going up to turn four. Now, and we'll see it from Sebastian Vettel's on board. Charles Leclerc at this point, I think he would have beat Valtteri into turn four if he just stayed where he was. But for some reason, Charles came straight across and just plain hit Valtteri Bottas. I don't get why he did that. I think maybe he didn't quite know where Valtteri's car was and he was trying to cover him off, but... I have to say, this driving from Leclerc is not really that good. And he was very lucky not to get a flat tyre because of this. Because it was quite actually very dangerous driving. And I don't think you can blame Valtteri Bottas for getting the damage to the front wing that he did get. Because Valtteri stayed to the left and Charles Leclerc just came over and basically hit him for no reason. So... Stupid driving from Charles Leclerc and, well, he got into a podium position, but in the end, he would not get it, of course, because at the very end of the race, Sebastian Vettel put it down the inside to get third place on the soft tyres compared to Charles Leclerc's worn, hard compound tyres. Leclerc, as you can see, trying to defend the inside, but leaves just about enough of a gap for Sebastian Vettel to go down the inside. Great racing, great close racing between Vettel and Leclerc. And you can see from this on board, it was a brave move from Sebastian on your teammate to go down that uh, short gap. But what made it possible was Charles came back over to the left slightly to let Sebastian have some space to get into P3. So 
Not the greatest defensive driving from Charles Leclerc, as we've seen again. Uh, he did that, of course, in Austria. But I think Sebastian, honestly, would have finished ahead of Charles Leclerc anyway. But what uh, can I just make one point when it comes to Ferrari? Why were they, when they were you know, all on their own for P3 and P4, why were they actively conspiring against Charles Leclerc to allow Vettel to have a podium? Because at the end of the day, they're a team. They weren't going to score any more points than they actually did. So why were they trying to get Sebastian a podium by putting him on the soft tyres? They weren't racing anyone else. Why didn't they put Charles Leclerc on soft tyres? He had a new set of soft tyres. Why didn't they do that? I, I don't get it. I really don't get it. I don't, I don't understand why they felt the need to try and help Sebastian beat Charles when they're both driving for the same team. I, I don't get it. But that's what Ferrari did, and that allowed Sebastian to finish in P3. But guys, that's it for the incident analysis. But before I go, I want to get into, as I was going to at the end of the race watch along, if it did not get copyright striked, I'm going to get into uh, what content is coming up on the channel during the summer break. Now, there is plenty coming up. First off, uh, in a couple days' time, I'm going to start doing my mid-season reviews for the top teams in the midfield. On Saturday, we'll do a season so far a podcast talking about how the season has been in terms of the races and the excitement. We'll also do a couple other podcast episodes such as how we think the rest of the season will go and then do a preview for Spa once we get close to that. And also, I will be doing uh, two or three, maybe more, opinion videos on certain drivers or teams. And... I will be doing a couple more driver comparison videos because you guys definitely have enjoyed me doing that. And also, I have a new video idea that I'm going to try out exactly this time, to, uh, not tomorrow, this time next week, Monday, 12 p.m. UK time, next Monday on the 12th of August, I believe. I'm going to be trying out a new idea and it's basically the same as this, but to do with classic incident it's going to be classic incident analysis and the first episode of that will be about Ayrton Senna versus Alain Prost and the incidents they had when they were going up against each other and hopefully that does well and if it does then the second episode will be to do with Michael Schumacher I'm hoping to do this as kind of just a continuation of this because I know you guys you know, really do like my analysis of crashes, overtakes and stuff like that. So I'm going to try out that idea and hopefully it does work. And we'll see what you guys think very, very soon. But yeah, that is what is coming up on the channel during the summer break. And then, of course, at the end of this month will be the Belgian Grand Prix at Spa. And yes, watch alongs will absolutely be back. Even if we get copyrighted, we'll still go ahead with it because... Why not? So yeah, that is it for today's video. And hopefully you guys will join me for plenty of content during the summer break. Just want to say, again, thank you for 7K subs. And thank you for the support after the strike on the stream yesterday. I really, really do appreciate it. Honestly, some of your words actually touched me. It was very, uh, very nice to hear. But when it comes to what I've talked about in this video, let me know if you disagree or agree with what I've said. And also don't forget to subscribe for more race weekend content because we'll continue it until the end of 2019. And smash the like button if you want to see this content continue on the channel. But guys, until Thursday, which will be my next video, reviewing the season so far for Mercedes, Ferrari and Red Bull, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.